Everyone who's ready to hear and listening in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Praise Him in this house. He's worthy. Come on. Give Him a glory shout. Hallelujah, God. You are worthy, God. We will dismiss our young ones to go. Go ahead and head on in and just receive the same Holy Spirit we're going to receive. Amen. I mean, you know, the little ones don't get a little God. Come on. The little ones don't get a little Holy Ghost. They get all that we get. Probably sometimes they get more. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is good. God is good all the time. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to you, God. Hallelujah. I want to talk this morning, just continue to talk about the presence of God. Uh, how we as a church and how we as a people have to have the presence of God. How we as a, as a believer in today's society, we, we have to have the presence of God in order to fulfill the many things that, that has been laid before us. Your life, according to the Old Testament, in Jeremiah declares that God has great and wondrous plans for you. Amen. He has things that only you have been equipped, only you have been charged up, and only you have been really, you know, created to be able to do it. And you're the only one that can do them. And I don't believe that God uses substitutes. I don't believe that. I believe that God has people that were always meant to accompany you. And sometimes when we fall down, we've got an Aaron right there. Come on, we've got someone who can accompany us and lift us up. And I don't think that, that God has plan B's and plan C's because I don't think anybody or anything can thwart the plan of God. Amen. Oh, come on. Yeah. Nothing can stop the plan of God. Nothing can come against the plan of God. The kingdom of God and what He is going to do in these last days is going to happen. Come on, it's going to happen. And, 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 I, and I've heard people say it's going to happen with or without us. I want to declare this morning, it's going to happen with us. Amen. Come on. Because that's the, that's the design of God. That's the divine design of God is that He is going to use us. He's faithful to complete what He starts. He doesn't just say, okay, you, you've messed up, you've missed it, I'm going to go get somebody else. That's not the way God is. God is going to shape you. Come on. God is going to use your circumstances. He's going to use everything you're going through, not to tear you down and destroy you, but to make you stronger than what you were before. Yes. Come on, that's what He's going to do. I want, the presence of God is going to bring, literally going to bring the kingdom of God into your life. Without the presence of God, you don't understand the kingdom of God. You read the Bible. You go through the parables. You understand the teaching of Jesus on the kingdom of God. You get it up here. But you don't know how to relate it down in here. And you don't know how to get it to come out through your words and your actions and your faith. You don't know how to tie all that together. That's because the presence of God has been missing. And when you bring the presence of God into your life, it connects the teaching of God to your life. And the teaching of God comes through your life. Can I get an amen? There are many people who can teach God's Word and they can line by line, they can present it. They can be great motivational speakers. They can be wonderful people who stand up there and encourage you and lift you up. But if that's all we get when we come to church, if that's all there is, and we leave here empty and void because the presence of God isn't in there, activating, becoming the catalyst that causes a reaction inside, all we get is church. Amen. And I've got nothing against church, but if I, if I leave church and all I had was church, I, I feel like I've been robbed. Come on. I, I want more than church. Right. I, want, I want more than just a relationship with you. I want more than just a friendship with you. I want to see the kingdom of God and the presence of God Amen. manifest yeah. in the day that we are living. I want what they had yeah. in the book of Acts. Yeah. God doesn't say that that was just for them. He, it's, it's for everybody who will come and pour everything that they've got into God. I don't want a distant glimpse of who God was. I don't, I don't, I don't want to look and, and back in the pages of Scripture and, and, and squint and say, oh yeah, that's how God was. Awesome God. I don't want a glimpse and look to the next town and see where God's moving in that church. Right, right here, right here. Wait, 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 wait to go God over there. <laughs> I don't want to come and, and see some of you all full of the glory of God and go, awesome God, I, I see you in their life. I don't want just that. Come on. I, I want Him now yes. in my life. Yes. And I believe, I believe 
He, that's what He wants. I believe God wants to connect to your now. And He doesn't do that through Scripture reading alone. He doesn't do that through prayer time alone. He doesn't do that through worship alone. He doesn't do that through coming to church alone. God is big and He's very involved in all these fruits and all these extensions of who you are and your expressions of who He is. I get that. He's connected to all of that. But there is a presence awareness that needs to get back in the church today. We've got to get back to that. We have perfected and mastered the scraps that we have been feeding people as pastors for years. We have come together with great words and great things, but it is time, come on, it is time that the church fall in love with the presence of God. Not church. We have grown to love church. We have grown to love the people of church. We've grown to love the ministries in church. We've grown to love the worship in church. We've grown to love everything. It's time we grow to love the presence of God that makes all that wonderful. In Exodus chapter 3, the story of Moses being sent to the children of Israel, bound up and locked up. I, I, I want to say, sadly, I think there are more churches bound up and locked up today than set free. Yes. And I don't want to get negative and I don't want to be uh, that type of a preacher this morning. But I want to throw that out there because I think God is about to send some Moseses into the churches. Come on. Some people that are going to deliver them, not from the wickedness and the evil and the corruption and the immorality, because we've come past that. Jesus has set us free from that. Amen. But for for, us, for, for you as deliverers to get into people's life and bring them into the deeper things of God, into the presence of God. Come on. Yes. God says to Moses, I want you to go and bring my people out. And, and God's, Moses says to God, basically, who are you? I, I don't know you. Moses wasn't raised in church. Moses wasn't raised around the presence of God. The first time Moses meets God, there's a bush on fire and it freaks him out. Right. And the bush speaks to him. And he doesn't know... Come on, the, when people are trying to understand the presence of God and he begins to speak to him, we don't know how to react because we've never encountered that before. And that is a sad statement to say that the presence of God has not been a part of church services to where when God does speak to people, it's like Moses at that bush, like, what is going on? What do I do? God says, simply take off your shoes. For the, for the ground that you are standing upon is holy. In other words, take off those things that disconnect you from me. Let me be a part of your life. Yes. Let me connect with you. He says, Moses, this is who you're going to tell them has sent you. Tell them the I am. Come on. The I am has set you. The God of your now. The God of your today. The God of your present situation has sent you. Amen. God was Moses' now God. And God wants to be your, listen to me, He wants to be your now God. Yeah. He doesn't want to be your yesterday God. He doesn't want to be your, oh, I see you in somebody else's life God. He doesn't want you running after somebody else's flame when you can have your own. He doesn't want you running after somebody else's bush that's on fire when you can have your own. He doesn't want you chasing somebody else's anointing or somebody else's glory when He has one all designed and set up just for you. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're missing out on walking in the presence of God simply because we miss those present experiences on a personal level. Every day, God is trying to touch you and speak to you. Every day, God is trying to reach into your heart yes, he is. with His presence. All these things that are happening around you, all these things that are coming against you, all these things that have stood in your face as obstacles or obstructions, God wants to use those to make you aware of His involvement in your life. Those things are there not to trip you up or hold you back, but to set you free from a mindset that is absence of His presence. Amen. He allows trouble and turmoil to come so that you can turn to Him and His presence can invade your personal experiences. So when you come and you gather together as a group of people, corporate, the the presence of God is even magnified more. And there are people who understand that glory. In the New Testament, there's a story of a husband and wife ministry team. Their names are Ananias and Sapphira. Anybody? It was a short-lived ministry. It didn't last long. And I want to talk about them for a minute. Because I think they're a key to us moving forward in the kingdom of God. I should say they're a key for us to know what not to do. Amen. In the, in the New Testament, it talks about them in the book of Acts. The church was growing. Why? 
Because God was adding to it daily. Right. Who was adding? God. <laughs> it wasn't seeker friendly programs. Come on. Well, oh, come on. It wasn't organizations and administrations and, and ministry teams. It, it wasn't traditions and, and programs and, and outreaches. It wasn't any of that. And I'm not saying all that is bad. But when the presence of God is missing, all that is bad. When the presence of God is there, all that becomes good. Come on. It becomes an extension of the presence rather than a substitute for the presence. Hear me? Yes. Ananias. I don't know. Come on. Ananias and Sapphira. Ananias and Sapphira are on fire for Jesus. They are on fire for Jesus. They're not some sheep or wolves in sheep's clothing. They are truly, I believe, following God, trying to do the best they can do, no different than anybody in this room. And the Bible says in those days the church was being added to daily by God. The church was on fire and it was doing things. It was bold. It was invading the enemy's territory. And that the people in the church saw that there were others in their church that had lack. So people were going around selling everything they had, bringing the money, laying it at the apostles' feet. And the apostles were distributing it to each one as they had need. How many of you wish those days were back? (laughs) See, you instantly thought of money, but I'm talking... Gifts and anointing and presence and power. How when someone is walking with that presence, why don't they share with me how to get that? When someone is walking in their anointing, why don't why don't they bring that anointing into my life? Come on. And when Ananias and Sapphira, they had this large lot of land and so they sold it and they looked at what everybody else was given and bringing. And the church was pretty poor, but they had some money. They had a pretty good lot of land. So rather than give everything they had, the Bible says they sold it and brought a portion and gave it. And that portion, I believe, I believe that portion was more than what everybody else was bringing. And so they looked at what everybody else was bringing and they gave only part of what they were bringing because that measured more than the most of everybody else. 